and welcome back to my channel. I hope you had a wonderful and safe Thanksgiving and that you enjoyed your day, maybe ate too much food. I'm um, recording this ahead, but hopefully I, hopefully I did too. I'm looking forward to, to having some, some delicious Thanksgiving food. We are fast approaching the end of 2020 and I think it's safe to say that this year has been rough on all of us. It's definitely been challenging. Um, many people have lost loved ones. It's just been it's been a year, let's just say that. And I think a lot of us have been embracing new hobbies, have been just trying to find ways to pass the time. But we are in the home stretch. It is almost <laughs> the end of 2020 and we are officially in the holiday season. So personally for me, I'd love to pretend like I spent all of my time accomplishing new things and learning stuff and not just spending a disgusting amount of time watching YouTube videos and browsing Pinterest. But I did do some time sewing and crafting and reading. And so today, um, I really want to focus a little bit on some of the books that I've been reading. So this year for me personally, with how disappointing and challenging and unexpected so many aspects of this year have been, um, I've really been enjoying reading a cozy mystery series. The particular series that I've been reading is The Witch City Mysteries by Carol J. Perry, which you can see right here. You can probably see this. We'll talk more about them in detail in a minute. So, in case you haven't heard of Cozy Mysteries before, or you haven't watched my other Cozy Mysteries video, um, they're a bit of an odd genre. There's generally always a murder, of course, because it's a murder mystery, typically. But it's handled in such a way that it's generally not violent or gory or scary in any way. Um, there's no really graphic sexual content. There's rarely any kind of um, foul language, if that's something that bothers you. And the protagonists always win. And plus, there's usually animals. So for me in particular, these are books that I find really comforting. There's something about them that... It's like watching really old detective mysteries on TV where, you know, they're gonna get the bad guy and you're not gonna have to see anything really terrifying and it's not gonna be some sort of shocking plot twist where your best friend is the murderer or something like that. And I think, you know, this year for me at least, that was something that I really needed. I really needed that kind of comforting, just kind of gentle plot that I could just kind of enjoy and go along for the ride and not have to be worried about what's around the corner because I feel like we all had enough of that this year. Just saying. So in this particular series, The Witch City Mysteries, they take place in Salem, which is actually the author um, Carol J. Perry's hometown, and it features a small sprinkling of the supernatural. So, in this book series, it's really interesting. I'm being drooled on by a cat, so I apologize if I'm a little bit distracted. Um, some characters embrace the supernatural more than others. You know, honestly, it kind of reminded me a little bit of how it's often handled in real life, right? So there's some people that believe in psychics and clairvoyance and people like that, and there's some people that don't. And, you know, in this book series, it's the same. There's some people that believe in it, there's some people that don't. As you go on, um, it gets a little bit more clear that, that this is real, at least for the main character, but it's still something that's very, very minor in terms of the plot. Um, this comes in kind of a sharp contrast to another Cozy Mystery series I read in January of 2020, although that feels like an actual eternity ago, um, which was the None of Your Business Mystery series by Dakota Cassidy. And in that series, the main character's best friend is a literal actual demon from hell. She escaped from hell because I don't remember why, because again, actual eternity ago. And um, so you can't really ignore that as much. It's, it's very clear that, <laughs> that there's a little bit more of a supernatural bit in that series. If you're interested, I did a video about that series as well. It's on my channel. It's one of the first videos that I actually did. Um, in the Witch City series, you can kind of embrace or not the supernatural bits of the story as you like. They're pretty infrequent, but they add a little bit of extra interest to the series. So there might be a ghost here or there, or there might be, you know, 
some kind of a psychic vision here and there, but it's not, you know, outright magic or anything like that. There's also, um, because it takes place in Salem, there's a little bit of a bent on, you know, witches and Halloween and those kinds of things. But again, it's, it's fairly minor in terms of the actual plot. The main focus is generally on solving whatever murder happens to have happened in that particular book. In general, that's something that I really enjoy about Cozy's as a whole. So you can find one that really is about anything that's of interest to you. I found roller skating Cozy Mysteries. I found ones about embroidery. Um, there's ones about food. Um, the food ones seem to come up a lot. There's ones that focus on coffee, bookstores, yarn shops, libraries. So really, if there's something that you're interested in, there's probably a Cozy about that topic. Um, they seem to feature small town shops, and they often have punny, punny titles. So for example, Dachshund Through the Snow, or um, my personal favorite, Assaulted Caramel, which I have not read, but I love that title and I just cannot quite let it go. Um, but Dachshund Through the Snow is a particularly Christmas themed one, so there's a lot of those as well that are holiday season themed. So this is a great time of year if you're interested in that kind of stuff to find something to read in whatever spare time you might have. Personally, I really enjoy the cozies that have a little bit of a fantasy bend. So that tends to be more of what I read in general anyway, is more fantasy or um, paranormal type books. I used to read a lot of like Kelly Armstrong and those kind of paranormal romances. So for me, these cozies like the Witch City series where it just kind of takes a little bit of a dive from the real world into the paranormal is really kind of right up my alley. I'm curious about ones that are related to other hobbies that I have too, like as I mentioned sewing and embroidery. So I'll probably look into those going forward. A lot of them focus on books, which I'm also of course very interested in, but none of your business was actually really unique in that it focused on a tattoo shop, which is not necessarily what you would normally think of when you're thinking of a cozy mystery. Are you done, Rupert? So that one was a little bit unique. So like I said, you can pretty much find a cozy about anything if you're willing to look a little bit. None of your business was quite unique in that it featured a tattoo shop and, you know, demons, nuns. They're fun, okay? I know it seems silly and maybe they are, but they're still fun and they're books and I enjoy them. I'm on book five of the Witch City Mystery Series, which is called Grave Errors. So let me just show you all of them really quickly. So the first book is Caught Dead Handed. Oop. So book one is Caught Dead Handed. Book two is Tales You Lose. Uh, that one has a little bit of a ghosty haunted mansion feel to it. Um, Look Both Ways and fourth is Murder Go Round. That one's really fun. It features an antique carousel horse. And then of course, like I said, um, book five is Grave Errors. So in this particular book, there is a little bit of a Dia de los Muertos twist, which is interesting. It's kind of a unique twist. They've done a lot about Halloween because of Salem and that being kind of a big deal there, but um, this one kind of goes into Dia de los Muertos a little bit. And I don't know if you noticed, but every cover features this kind of chonky orange cat, which is, of course, exciting to me. We just met Rupert. So um, you often find these animals or cats or um, various creatures that kind of go along with the main protagonist, which I love. I love animals. So that's always something fun for me personally as well. So like I said, I'm on book five, which is Grave Errors. I think there are 10 books in this series, so I'm not entirely sure if I'll finish out this series or look for another one, but they've definitely been a help with surviving 2020. Cozies in general, kind of the appeal and kind of the downside is that they can be a little bit predictable. So, you know, you know the protagonist is probably going to get the bad guy. Um, and so they kind of become a little bit formulaic, which is comforting, but at a certain point, I don't know that I necessarily need to read 10 of them in the same series. But, you know, it remains to be seen. I might end up reading all of them. Who knows? 
and I've enjoyed hanging out with Lee, ABP, and Orange Cat Orion. We like orange cats in this house. It's kind of what we do. And there are just a lot of other fun cozy mystery series that have caught my eye, whether I'm walking through Barnes & Noble or the public library. Unfortunately, these books are really easy to find in public libraries, and most are generally published in paperback or ebook, which makes them affordable. And you can often find used copies if you look on Amazon or at used bookstores. At used bookstores, the only challenge is trying to find them in order, if that's something that's important to you. Although I will say that in most cases, it's not really critical. Um, you tend to miss out on backstory on characters and things like that, but the plot seems to be kind of specific to each book, kind of like a sitcom, I guess, where there are elements that carry through, but they'll introduce them to you enough that you'll be fine. But if it's really important to you to read the books in order, the used bookstore route might be a little bit more of a challenge. The first book in Witch City is Caught Dead Handed. Um, Lee, the main character, returns to her hometown of Salem and naturally comes upon a murder which is something that you will encounter that's kind of a consistent theme in cozy mysteries that the protagonist, for whatever reason, completely unqualified, comes upon a murder and has to help solve it for whatever reason. They become entangled in the case and they have to help and it's a whole thing. Um, you kind of have to suspend your disbelief a little bit because why on earth would this librarian or, um, in this case, random unemployed news reporter, TV psychic type person be participating in this case, but they're cozy mysteries. They're not really a true crime series, so you just kind of have to let that go a little bit if you want to enjoy these stories. I'm not sure that I would say that there's too much value in rereading these books. Um, like I said, they're kind of a little bit formulaic, and once you read them, at least for me, I don't really see the point in revisiting the story. Um, once you know who done it and the story wraps up, it's just kind of kind of done. And it, like I said, it's kind of sitcom like in that whatever happened in that particular book might be very much contained in that particular book and may not have a whole ton of bearing on the future books. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to reread them or not. I don't know that they're necessarily books that I would recommend investing in hardcover copies of, for example, just because I don't know how often you'll reach for them again. But if you haven't tried reading any cozy mystery series before, I can definitely recommend giving it a shot in general. This series in particular is fun. I mean, in general, they're all fun in different ways, so you just kind of have to find the ones that appeals to you. Some of them have recipes in them even, so if you're a baker, you might enjoy that. And who knows? You know, you never know what you might find. And in 2020, at least, I know for me, I've needed some joy and comfort in these books. The genre might be able to bring you some joy and comfort as well. Even if that joy and comfort just comes from an excuse to laugh at a silly title or have some tea. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, um, please go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel for more book related content. Let me know down below if you have any cozies you recommend. Um, I'd love to hear your recommendations. And thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.